The unit five is more trigonometry. Um, it starts, it's, it's going to get into some really important stuff for calculus, but it, it's going to start with um, just working with the trig identities which we eventually have to use to trade things out so that we can solve equations. That's why we have to use these. So the trig identities I'm talking about today are the top ones on the back of your full sheet peach reference sheet that has the unit circle on one side. It should have these towards the top. There might be a box above it right about area of triangles. And then this but is this on there? Yes. Does it look exactly like this? Okay. So um, I would like to think that these first ones you kind of have memorized up here that sine and cosecant and cosine and secant and tangent and cotangent are reciprocals. And that tangent, this is the important one here if you don't have this one memorized. Okay. Tangent is sine over cosine or y over x. And then cotangent would be the reciprocal. So this is where we're going to spend our time focusing today is on these Pythagorean identities, at least for the first part of the lesson. So um, this is in your packet on the back of worksheet one, I think. Um, this doesn't have a slide. Is this worksheet 1A? 1B, thank you. Okay, so anybody know the definition for tangent that I just mentioned? Y over X means it's sine over cosine, good. And cotangent would then be cosine over sine. Now, you're always supposed to write an angle name behind any of those functions. Am I going to be picky about that? You guys know me better than that. No, <laughs> okay. If in your work you forget those little angle measures all over the place and you just write sine over cosine, I'll live with it. All right. Cosecant is the reciprocal of what, guys? Sine. And secant is the reciprocal of cosine. And I remember those because the S doesn't go with the S. It goes with the C and the C with the S and all that good stuff. Okay? Any questions on those? Those are all off your sheet. Okay. The very first Pythagorean identity really has to do with the unit circle. Remember the radius was one, okay? So when we talked about this little right triangle, the X was the cosine and the Y was the sine and the radius was one. So we end up with the cosine squared plus the sine squared equals one, Pythagorean theorem. Okay, commercial break right here, super important. Cosine squared of theta really means the cosine of theta squared. But that's a lot of work to write, okay? It doesn't mean the angle is squared. It means the value of the whole function is squared, all right? So when we write cosine squared, it, it means the whole function squared, or cosine times cosine, all right? Now, it says solve it for cosine squared. So another way to write this, and you need to be able to kind of rearrange these in your head, but for now we'll do them on the notes. How could we get cosine squared all by itself? What would we have to do? Subtract sine squared over to the other side. So then it would say cosine squared theta equals and if we subtracted sine squared from both sides, you don't have to show that step, but it would say minus sine squared of theta here, okay? So that's one version, which by the way, this would then factor, do you see that those are both perfect squares? One times one is one, sine times sine is sine, and when you have a difference of squares, it factors, right? One plus sine, one minus sine. So I'm not saying we need to do that right now, but it does factor. All right, if we had gone back up to the original one up here and instead we got the sine squared by itself, what would we have had to subtract over to the other side? 
would be 1 minus cosine squared, yes? Okay. And again, that right-hand side would factor if that was going to help us. It rarely does help because honest, unless there was a denominator that was going to simplify. Now, I need you to understand, these only work with squares. You cannot square root this randomly, okay? You can never square root a sum or difference. Anyway, okay. So now the next thing on your note says, well, let's try dividing every single term here by a cosine squared. It'll give us a new identity. So just write cosine squared, cosine squared, cosine squared under there. And I didn't even take time to fill in my thetas. What does that become? What's a cosine squared divided by a cosine squared, guys? On a good day, one. Everybody okay? What is this, though? A sine squared over cosine squared had a new name today. What was sine over cosine? Tangent. So this is squared. So this is a tangent squared. And on the right-hand side, a 1 over cosine is the same as a secant. And this was a cosine squared, so it is a secant squared. Now, that's where that comes from, but I'm not going to take your sheet away. Is that one that's already on your sheet? Secant squared equals 1 plus tangent squared, or 1 plus tangent squared equals secant squared, okay? That's where it comes from. It comes from the original one divided out by cosine. Okay, what if they asked us to get the tangent squared by itself? What would that say? Tangent squared would equal, we'd have to subtract the 1 over to this side. So we'd have secant squared minus 1. So just, just as an aside, and you don't need to necessarily write this down, but what would something like this be? What would that equal? Negative 1, yeah, because I if I subtracted this back over here, guys, everybody see that? Be left with a negative 1 over there. Okay, just, you don't need to even write that down, but I'm just trying to get you to see that you can manipulate these, okay? All right, and let's do one more. It says, this time divide everything by a sine squared. So under here, I'm going to write sine squared, sine squared, sine squared. And I'm too lazy to write the thetas. So what would that become? All right, the first one is cosine over sine. Anybody know that one? Look in your sheet if you need to. It is cotangent. And that would be squared. And it says plus, what's sine over sine? 1 squared is just 1 equals, and over here, 1 over sine is cosecant, and that one was squared. And that's the other one that should be on your sheet, yes? And that's how that one came about. And if we wanted cotangent by itself, we would do what here? Subtract the 1 over to the other side, okay? So just a little rearranging practice. I found that worksheet online. I thought it was very helpful for explaining these and practicing a little bit. Um, it definitely spread things out more than I would have, but we'll live with it. Um, we don't need to write anything here necessarily, but what's, what is another definition for sine? Anybody know? What is sine the reciprocal of? Cosecant, so this is really 1 over cosecant. I don't think I'd bother, I don't think I would ever use that trade. Sine is the simpler one, right? Why would you trade it for something more complicated? But what is cosine? 1 over secant and cotan or tangent has a couple definitions. Um, sine over cosine is a good one, but if you were talking about reciprocals, it could be 1 over cotangent. I find that not useful either, but... In case you saw 1 over cotangent, you might think, oh, that's a tangent. Okay. Go home tonight. Use the back of that page for some fun activity. I'm sorry there's wasted paper. Okay. So we're going to start using these now to do some simplifying. Simplifying.
there are lots of ways you can approach trig identities, um, but the main way, I just think of that as a bank, okay? You can take a bunch of fives to the bank and get out a 20 or a 100 or something, right? We can just trade things, okay? If you have a five pound bag of change, you can take it in and get it traded out for some bills, right? So we're just gonna trade things out. What could I trade a tangent for? This says tangent times cosine. Well, tangent, I can trade out sine over cosine. And then there's a times cosine. And whenever you have something that isn't a fraction, it means it's over what? Over one. Now what happens? Yeah. If I wrote sine cosine over cosine, I could divide out the cosine and I'm left with sine of theta. These can be tricky for students because they don't know when they're done. Okay, it does in the directions say you want to write each expression in terms of a single trig identity or a constant. So you could end up at the end with just one, like a number one or a negative one or something like that, a number. Or you could end up with a single trig function, but what they don't want you to end up with is an expression, okay, if you can help it. All right, now think about this one. This is squared, so I can use those Pythagorean ones. What was 1 minus cosine squared? So it started out as sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. If I subtracted the cosine squared over the other side, what would be left? Yes, so this is a sine squared. And it's over a cosine squared on the bottom. Any ideas? A single, yes. Sine over cosine is tangent, right? It said we need a single trig function, and tangent would be a single trig function. So sine over cosine can trade for tangent, but since both of these are squared, we would have tangent squared. It's like this, and I don't ever want you to have to write this, but sine squared over cosine squared means there was a sine over cosine times another sine over cosine, which is a tangent times a tangent, which is a tangent squared. If that doesn't make sense to you, anybody, we good? Okay, that's just how you could write it, but I wouldn't go there. All right, let's try C. I usually leave sines and cosines alone to start, but what could I trade a cosecant for? It is the reciprocal of sine. Okay, now remember when there's nothing, it's over one, so I, I didn't get very far. I got a cosine over a sine. Does that have a special name, cosine over sine? It is cotangent. Good. And you could write it below. You could write it next to it. There's no special way you have to write these. But there's our single function all by itself. All right. Um... So here we have sine theta times secant theta divided by tangent theta. Whew, that sounded all complicated. Okay. You want to trade it for sines and cosines maybe? That's a strategy a lot of people use. So I have a sine theta times, what is a secant? One over cosine. Now, before I mess with the bottom, anybody know what that top is going to become? Yeah, a sine over cosine, which is a tangent. So we could trade the bottom for sine over cosine and maybe still recognize, but other, you could just leave it a tangent because the top is going to trade for a tangent. So then what is tangent over tangent? If you had traded it, you would just have sine over cosine divided by sine over cosine, which is still what? One. So this all traded out for the constant of one because it's the same on the top as it is on the bottom. Yes? We okay? 
Pretty easy one so far. All right, the next section is, is an algebraic review. It really does tie to what we're going to do here. When you end up with a fraction over a fraction, there's a couple ways you can attack this. In algebra, you were probably taught 2 thirds is being divided by 4 fifteenths, which made 2 thirds be multiplied by the reciprocal. Do you remember that? You flipped the second one over. And then you could reduce uh, either later or now. It doesn't matter. Let's see. 3 goes in here 5 times. 2 goes in here 2 times. I think you end up with 5 halves. Okay. But there's another way that we do these to get rid of complex fractions when we get to calculus. What we do when we get to calculus is we multiply the common denominator onto the top and the bottom. And it just magically simplifies everything. What is the common denominator on uh, B here? That's a 5 goes into both, but if we were trying to get a common denominator, it's got to be a multiple. So it would be the 35, okay? So if I multiply the top by a 35 and the bottom by a 35, Use your calculator if you need to, but 4 divided by 5 times 35. 5 goes into 35 7 times, so 4 times 7 is 28 up there. Everybody okay? You can type 4 divided by 5 times 35. And down here, 4 divided by 35 times 35 is going to make that just a 4. So what do we wind up with? 7. And we didn't really have to deal with fractions. We got rid of them right away. So can you try that on C for me? Multiply the top and bottom both by what? Just a 5. And what do you end up with? 2 divided by 5 times 5 is just 2. And 3 divided by 5 times 5 is just 3. And do you see we didn't have to write it out three times when we did it that way? Okay, I don't care about D, let's just move on. All right, they put this at the top again. Um, they did some rearranging in weird ways. Do you see this one over here? They like, um, they took this one and they subtracted, or they changed all the signs on it maybe, okay? So they show some different ways that you can rearrange things. Only these basic ones are on the reference sheet you get to use. All of the rest of these you'd have to kind of manipulate in your head, okay, to get to those. All right, so this is a complex fraction is what they're telling us, and that's why it ties into what we just did. So let's just write this as a fraction first. Cosecant is 1 over what? Sine. And it is being divided by what is cotangent? Cosine over sine. You need to figure these out and get them memorized if you don't. I think those are actually on the sheet. Are they on the reference sheet that cotangent is cosine over sine or not? No? Nope, I don't think they are. Yeah, uh, that's a great. Okay, so let me go back to this slide. I didn't realize that. I forgot. Um, this is not on there, right? This box right here. Not on reference sheets, okay? Those are the ones you have to have memorized, all right? Just to clarify. Um, back here, where were we at? Do, 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 do. Okay, what's the common denominator top and bottom? You could, you could rewrite this. You could write 1 over sine is being divided by cosine over sine, which means i got to flip the bottom one over, blah, 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 blah. Or I can just multiply a sign onto the top and a sign onto the bottom. That's legal. You're multiplying by one because it's sign over sign. What does the top become when you multiply that? Just one. And on the bottom, when you multiply by sign, you get just cosine. And what's one over cosine? Cosine. 
We got a single fraction, a single uh, function. Okay, we got it down to a single function. All right, let's try this guy. One minus cosine squared. Now, remember the identity on our sheet was cosine squared plus sine squared equals one. So if we subtracted the cosine squared over here, what would we have? Sine squared. So we're going to trade this for a sine squared. Let me use a different color here. And what is the denominator? Sine squared over cosine squared. Now, hmm, I'm not really sure that I want to deal with multiplying top and bottom by a common denominator because the top doesn't have a common denominator, right? So if you don't write this next step out, I'm okay with that. But it currently says sine squared is being divided by sine squared over cosine squared. And what do you do when you see a divide and then a fraction? You change it to multiply and then a reciprocal. So we're going to leave sine squared alone. And we're going to multiply by the reciprocal of this. It would have worked if you'd multiplied top and bottom by a cosine squared, but it's messy. Again, because only one of them was a fraction, this was easier, I think, to understand. So what happens? Sine squared divided by a sine squared, we're left with a cosine squared. Now, I will tell you, there are other ways to do a lot of these, okay? There are other ways to approach these. So if it's not making sense and you want me to try something different, let me know. I'm trying to explain the easiest way, but sometimes that's not the way you would see. All right, couple more. Can you try this one maybe on your own? Change everything to sines and cosines and see what happens. What's a secant? Oh, it's one over cosine. Now, if it was me, I might at this point have recognized the top is going to be one and just left the bottom a tangent. But most of you are thinking, let's change it out for sine over cosine. So that's fine. What happens up on top? It just cosine times 1 over cosine becomes 1. So I have 1 divided by sine over cosine. Now, anybody ready to put an answer down now? Yeah, it's 1 divided by tangent, right? Which is, what's the reciprocal of tangent? Cotangent. But otherwise, if you needed a little bit more, it's currently 1 divided by sine over cosine. You flip that over when you the bottom one flips over, and what is cosine over sine? Okay, so at some point you should come up with cotangent, but that's the part where I say it, it's sometimes different people will catch on at some point earlier. Like if I had just realized these were reciprocals and going to become one, right? They're reciprocals of each other. So 1 divided by tangent is cotangent. So some of you might not even had much work at all. All right. This one says sine over what? Cosecant is 1 over sine. Do those cancel out? You got to think about that a little bit. It says sine is being divided by 1 over sine which means sine is being multiplied by what? Sine over 1, which is sine squared. That's a single function. It just happens to be squared. 
it's kind of like 2 divided by a half. Those don't cancel, right? How many half of pizzas are there if you order two pizzas? You order two whole pizzas, how many halves did you get? Four, right? It, it, they don't cancel out. It's not one, it's not zero. It's, you have to flip it over, multiply. All right. So your practice is just to do worksheet 3A. I think there are like eight problems there. Show your work underneath them there and put your final answer over on that blank. We have a little extra time. Is there any one of them that anyone wants me to do? Yeah. Say again. Number two. Okay. Anybody recognize what we can trade that for? A one minus sine squared. Remember there was one, because it has squareds, there was one that said cosine squared plus sine squared equals one. Okay, Antoine? So if we moved this over to the other side, we'd have 1 minus sine squared equals a cosine squared. So we could trade the top. And the only reason I'm thinking that's a good idea is because then there's no adding or subtracting left to worry about. Now I know these have squareds, but what is a cosine over a sine? It's a cotangent. Cosine over sine is cotangent, and since these were both squared, this is still squared, okay? Because that, this, if you don't need to write this, but it's really a cosine over sine, all squared, so therefore it's a cotangent that's been squared. So number two, I got down to a cotangent squared. And like I said earlier, if you don't write any of those thetas, it'd be really good if you wrote the theta on the final answer, but I wouldn't count it wrong even if you didn't. But, but if you don't write them along the way because it's just a bunch of extra writing, I'm good with that. Can I let you try the other ones and see if you get stuck somewhere? Again, work on memorizing you don't already know, you really do have to know this top right here, okay? Which I think we wrote. Didn't we write these somewhere? Right here? Those are really the ones you need, right there, those four that we wrote at the very top, okay? Absolutely. Uh, there's some on my cart that are sharpened. Let me stop my...